Hey, Bolo Buddies, thanks for watching. Okay, I have 16 big money bolos coming your way. These are items that I bought low and sold high, items to be on the lookout for. I'm gonna tell you where I got it, what I paid for it, and what it sold for. But first, I'm gonna show you my new YouTube channel. It is called Sourcing with Bolo Buddies. And by the time this video shares, it probably will not be as new. But I have 619 subscribers, so I'm not sure where it'll be at when you guys actually see this video. But one thing I've started is today's bolo, which is a 60 second or less video that I share with you a bolo item that I sold. Um, great way to just kind of pop in and check out one bolo really quickly. Um, I'm also doing my sourcing videos over here and I've started a new thing where I'm creating challenges for other YouTubers to come and compete and kind of network and collab together. So definitely make sure you're subscribed to my Sourcing with Bolo Buddies. There is a link down in the description. I also have my Bolo Buddies Facebook group. If you're not a member, please check the description for those links. I have two Facebook groups where I share bolos and it's another great resource to learn. And I'd also like to tell you about Reselling Resource Center. It's another Facebook group that is great for um, seller events, reseller events, getting your store noticed. He does lots of things. And when I say he, this is ran by Primetime Treasure Hunter. He has a YouTube channel. His name is Dominic and he is excellent at um, doing things to help you generate sales. He does a uh, cha ching -thon on his YouTube channel, which is an event once a month, which is also a great way for you guys to go and make sales. Also, if you have not been to my Bolo live show, definitely come check that out. It's a great way to get exposure for your eBay item and to share with others um, what your item sold for to help others learn. So definitely check out the Bolo live show. My show is on Wednesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and Primetime Treasure Hunters channel um, has a live show right before mine at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, you guys wanna see some bolos? Let's go check out my big money bolo items. I've got 16 coming your way. The first item I sold is this vintage Halloween Lisa Frank party favors. I got these in a mystery box. I was super excited because I saw Lisa Frank and I know that Lisa Frank can be a bolo. You can see right here, the original retail price of this was $1.99. They're little pill puzzles um, and they've got like a little marble and you try to get it into the little slots. Anyway, this sold for a best offer of $40. The buyer was all in for $50.69 with tax and shipping. And again, that came out of a mystery box. That was a lucky find. The next item I almost put in my garage sale. Yes, um, I picked up a bunch of mystery boxes from a thrift store and there was a lot of country decor. And honestly, like I don't know that market. And I'm thinking I put a lot of items in my garage sale that I probably could have sold online for a nice profit. Um, this item just stood out to me. I don't know why, but I was like, I'm just going to list it and I'm going to list it high because I feel like it could be special. And it's from 1995. It looks like maybe it was handmade. So it could have been like at a craft show or something like that. No clue, just speculating. But I ended up selling this for full asking price of $64. I had it listed for 80. It was on sale for 20% off. The buyer paid shipping. So they were all in with tax and shipping for $79.98. So definitely an unexpected bolo for me, something I just felt like was special and really well made and it ended up paying off that I listed it. And again, I'm wondering how many items I put in the garage sale that I should have listed on eBay. The next item I sold are these Little Shepherds Little People Fisher Price set. This has been sitting in my basement for a long time and I finally got around to listing it. So um, you guys, if you have money piles, definitely get those items listed because that is money that is just sitting in a pile. Um, I sold this for $40. The buyer was all in for $49 and 20 cents. And I picked this up at a garage sale for less than a dollar. The next item is this vintage three stooges doll. And this is curly. It's new in the box. I picked this up at a garage sale for $3. It sold for $35 and 99 cents. And the buyer was all in for $48 and 64 cents. 
The next item I sold is this huge Scooby-Doo playset. I picked this up at a thrift store for $5. I could not believe it was $5, but it was. And I ended up taking a best offer of $100 for this. And the buyer paid the shipping. They were all in for $165.92. It is multiple play sets and a vehicle. So the box was pretty big. So the shipping was a lot. What I do is I put in the actual dimensions and the actual weight. And then eBay will calculate that based on the buyer's location um, compared to mine. So if they're in California, it's going to be more expensive. Now, I also added this video to my um, listing description. So I've connected this to my YouTube channel. And I actually started a separate YouTube channel for this. And what I do in this video is I go over all of the features of the playset, basically how it works. So there's different little things that you can like push and, you know, they do different things. So did this help sell my item? I don't know, but it could have. So definitely keep that in mind. And if you want to learn how to add a video to your listing, um, I'll try to remember to link it. But if not, you can search my uh, YouTube channel for um, that video. The next item I sold are these vintage miniature teapots. They're like little vegetable shapes. They're super, super cute. These also came out of a mystery box. It was an unexpected bolo for me. I was not sure if they would do well, but I thought they were cute and I priced them at $54.99. I was running a 20% uh, off sale, but I still went ahead and took an offer for $35 and the buyer paid the shipping. So they were all in for $51. Um, not a super heavy item, but once I bubble wrapped everything, it I did use a uh, bigger box. I can't remember if I double boxed it or not. The next item I have, I've been making these toy boxes. Um, that's what I'll call it is a toy box. Vintage to now toys. It's just a hodgepodge of items that I have picked up at garage sales or in the mystery boxes and I'm lotting them together. I have found that when I put these on Mercari, I have people saying, can you sell me just that one item? And I typically say no, but this one sold on eBay. And I took a best offer of $58.99 for this. The buyer paid the tax and the shipping, so they were all in for $85.02. The next item I sold came from an estate sale. I picked up, I don't know, 10 or so outfits at an estate sale for $8. That's what I paid for it. You know, I think it might have been can't remember if it was half off day. It might've been half off day. So I may only have $4 in the lot, but either way, you can see this does have some condition issues. So I decided to sell this separately from the other piece that goes with it, but the buyer was able to find both pieces in my store and they bought both of them. So there's this piece. And then this piece goes over the dress and this piece was in better condition than the other. But the buyer for both pieces was all in for $98. With tax and shipping, it was $109.18 that the buyer paid for this top and this dress. So this is the Disco Date outfit. And it's outfit number 1807. So you can see I've got that in my title. That helps people search for it. And again, they bundled those two items. The next item I sold is this Atlanta 1996. It's new old stock. It's a harder to find hat. And I got this at a garage sale. I think it was a dollar. And I sold it for $38, best offer. And the buyer was all in for $50.18. The next item I sold are these micro mosaic brooch pin lot. There's four here. I probably should have um, parted this out. Um, and sold them each individually, but I thought that they were going to go for more, but I ended up taking a best offer of $60 and the buyer paid shipping. This was an international sale. So they were all in for $65 and 50 cents because it went to the global, global shipping. Um, I don't want to call it an office, but shipping center, and then they shipped it to the person. So I'm not sure what their actual total was, but their total that came to me was $65 and 50 cents. 
And um, this came from my bulk buy. I bought it on eBay to sell on eBay. And if you guys would like to know more about that, I do have a playlist so you can check that out. The next item I sold is this vintage 1998 Baldur's Gate uh, chapter one and two Forgotten Realms role playing game. I believe this is a PC game. And this also went internationally, I do believe. Um, I took a best offer of $40. The buyer was all in for $46.25. I will say that the buyer did tell me to package the item well, and they told me to bubble wrap it. Well, I wasn't shipping it in a poly mailer, so I didn't bubble wrap it. I actually put it in a box. And I guess the item got damaged. Um, I don't know if like the box got stepped on or I, I don't really understand what bubble wrap would have done, but they were disappointed that I did not bubble wrap it. Again, if, if the box is damaged to the point that it bent the box and bent the item, I it's a box. I don't think that the bubble wrap would have protected it. What do you guys think? Am I wrong? I felt like I went above and beyond like for the packaging and I feel really, really bad that it, the box got damaged, but I don't know that bubble wrap would have helped. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Again, I could be wrong. Um, so yeah, that was disappointing. I did offer that they return it, um, for a full refund. Um, but they did not. So, uh, yeah, I, I might've messed up on that one. So by not bubble wrapping it, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I put it in a sturdy box. I mean, I don't know. All right. The next item that sold is this Johnny West Mark's 1967 Jamie West action figure. He is missing his hand. Okay. Um, besides that, he is complete. Uh, a lot of times people will need maybe the head or the leg and they will use um, this item for parts. This is a harder to find item. I picked it up at a garage sale for 50 cents and I took a best offer of $35 plus shipping. The buyer was all in for $43.85. The next item I sold is this vintage dollhouse chase lounge chair. It is a rare style, a harder to find item. And I took a best offer. Nope, I'm sorry. I sold this for full sale price of $44. The buyer paid the shipping. And they were all in for $49.50, and this was an international buyer. The next item I sold is this Napa hat, which I did post this on my community page. I'm like, what do you guys think I should do? I have this listed for $79.99. I got an offer for $40, and I went ahead and accepted the offer for $40. The buyer was all in for $49.90. Now, when I originally listed this, I feel like comps were higher and maybe people have been selling them lower because when I searched comps before I accepted the offer, they were more in the $40 price range. So I went ahead and took that offer of $40 plus shipping. The last item I sold is awesome. It is called, um, uh, I'm probably going to say this wrong, Lent Lenticule, Lent. I'm not going to say it at all. Uh, Lent cure. I can't say it. Okay. So when you move it, it does this. You see how the leg kicks depending on the position of the um, TV. Lent, lenticular. Lenticular. Oh my gosh. It's like alum, aluminum. I can't say it. So now you guys can add that to your list of things that Bolo Buddies cannot say. But anyway, that's what it does. That's the feature. And this is a very hard to find item. And I sold this for $35 best offer and the buyer paid shipping. And I think it's pretty cool. Um, it's a TV set for a dollhouse. And if you guys can help me out in the comments with how to pronounce that in an easy way, lenticular, lenticular, lenticular. Is that right? Lenticular? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway aluminum, aluminum, aluminum. So there you have it, you guys. Those are my 16 big money bolos. Again, go check out my other channel, Sourcing with Bolo Buddies, and uh, check out those Facebook groups. They will be linked down in the description of the video, or you can just type in Reselling Resource Center or Bolo Buddies into the Facebook uh, search tab, and you can find the items that way. 
All right, you guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you at the next one.